uh, so today we're going to be talking about uh, simple random walks, which uh, are stochastic processes that hopefully um, you're relatively familiar with. We're going to be talking about uh, hitting probabilities, which is uh, a term I like to kind of consider, a term I, I like to apply to the probability that a simple random walk will you know, ever achieve a, a certain level. But before we, we do that, let's just do a quick overview of, of simple random walks. Um, I've drawn one up here. Uh, we labeled it x sub t. Uh, the t sub t kind of indicates that this random variable is indexed to time, which is what makes it a stochastic process. Stochastic processes evolve through time. Um, I have some y-axis, you know, so that any sort of unit, time, space, which are, I guess, not really time, but, you know, space steps up, steps down, that sort of thing. And you can kind of see the random walk uh, is this free time points labeled on the x-axis um, or time axis. Uh, which means time one, time two, time three, and each step we either go up or down um, at one step. So here we script it up a little bit. Um, the important parameter for the simple random walk is p, the probability of going up on any one step. In this case, I have p equals 0.6, so you have 60% chance of going up on any one step, 40% chance of going down. Uh, each step is independent, so in the long run, this, this thing will kind of work like this. Um, so what we're going to be interested in is uh, the probability of hitting a certain value k. So um, I kind of just drew it here. Let's say you know I have some value k, maybe k equals 10, k equals 100, k equals 200. And if you let this simple random walk walk around forever, um, we want to find the probability of ever hitting that value. We're going to call that p sub k. Okay. p sub k, we're going to say equals probability that x sub t, which is our stochastic process, a random walk, x sub t ever hits. So we could hit it in 20 years, in 30 years, you know, it's just going to run, and as soon as it kind of reaches that k value, we, we hit k. We want to find the probability that, that this occurs. Um, so this is an interesting to think about because it's obviously a little bit complex, right? If we allow this stochastic process to run forever, a lot of things can happen, right? It can go up, it can go down, it can reach the, the, the k in, in, in a bunch of different ways. It could take however long we need. Um, so this is a little bit complicated to think about, but we can break this down uh, really nicely by actually uh, relating this to a, very, a much simpler quantity, which we're going to do here. So what's cool is we can say p sub k equals p sub 1. p sub 1, right, so we're just plugging in 1 for k. p sub 1 is the probability of hitting 1, so, you know, here's 1. On the chart, clearly this random walk hit one. The probability of hitting one to the power of k. And we can take a second to think about why that makes sense, right? Um, basically, we want to go up k steps. So going up k steps is the same as going up one step k times, right? So the probability that we make it to one step, probability that we make it to one step k times, that's the probability that we're going to get to two k steps. So that's why it raises to k. Each step is independent, so we can multiply the probabilities. We get this, this cool result. And p sub 1, as you can probably guess, is way easier to find than p sub k, which is exactly what we're going to do. So to find p sub 1, we're going to use something called uh, first step conditioning, conditioning on the first step, law of total probability. Basically, we're going to think about um, uh, conditioned on the first step of the simple random walk, what's the probability that we ever you know, hit the value 1. Right. And uh, we can break it down into two cases. The simple random walk goes up on the first step or down on the first step. So, you know, we have probability P, right, that we go up on the first step. And then we're going to multiply that by P sub 1, given that we went up on the first step. So I'm just using U to indicate the event that we went up on the first step. So this is a little confusing sometimes. P sub 2 is like the same thing. Probability X is just going to go P. So the probability that we went up on the first step times the new probability that we're going to hit 1, given that we went up on the first step, um, plus q. q is just 1 minus p. Instead of writing 1 minus p, we just use q. I'll actually write that here. q equals uh, 1 minus p. Plus q times the uh, new probability of hitting the first step, given that we went down on the first step. Okay, so law of total probability, break the world into different uh, cases you know, weight the cases by the probability that those those worlds occur. So <clears throat> we look at each of these terms, p and q are constants. Um, and they're given based on the problem. Uh, probability of hitting one, given that we went up on the first step, 
Let's just one, right? Because we, we went up, we hit one, we're done. P sub one is now one. We went up, it, it's all good. So um, that term just becomes P. Um, this term is a little bit trickier. P sub one, given that we went down, so we're actually a negative one now. What's the probability that we hit one? Well, we can actually um, basically think of if we're at you know negative one and we want to hit one, that's the same as starting from zero and hitting two, right? So, you know, we go from negative one to one to two, eventually. So that's the same as hitting two, which is uh, Q times P sub two, right? But instead of writing P sub two, we can just say P sub one squared, right? Basically like going up twice and, and we're using this formula, P sub two equals P sub one squared, right? So now we have this nice uh, term, which is totally in terms of uh, P sub one, and I can move everything uh, to one side, so P sub Q, Q P sub one squared minus P sub one plus P equals zero. That looks like a quadratic equation. We can use a quadratic formula to solve it, right? So we have minus B, remember Q equals A, negative one is B, uh, P is C, so we have minus B, so one plus or minus the square root of B squared, so that's one, uh, B is negative one, minus 4ac minus 4 p root c all over 2a root c. Okay, so that's our that's our quadratic formula. And this looks like a little bit weird to solve because of the square root 1 minus 4 qp, but we actually have a, a trick to solve that. So we're gonna go um, we're gonna go up here just to kind of uh, work that out. So we're gonna use a trick here. It's kind of a weird trick. Uh, you might not like think of it uh, from from the start, but it's it's a it's a useful trick to kind of break this like weird square root thing down. So we know, right, we know that uh, one equals P plus Q. And that's because P is the probability that, you know, the thing goes up, we're gonna walk this up, Q is the probability it goes down. More simply, uh, P plus one minus P is gonna be one, right? So we know, we know this is true. If we square both sides, square both sides, we get one squared, which is one, um, equals uh, P plus Q squared expand terms, so one squared becomes one. Right, I have this one plus, you know, Q squared plus Q squared. And now I wanna make this term look something like this term. So I'm gonna subtract, I already have one on this side. I'm gonna subtract uh, four PQ from both sides, right? So subtract four PQ from both sides, you get one minus four PQ. Now we have two PQ originally on this side. Subtracting four PQ, we get minus two PQ. Awesome, minus two PQ. This right-hand side simplifies to P squared. P minus Q squared. So this is way easier to plug, you know, we've shown that one minus four PQ equals P minus Q squared. Way easier to plug into this quadratic formula, so I'm taking we're taking this form, plugging into here, but we'll just keep it the same. One times square root square root of p minus q squared is just pq. There's you know technically we're taking a square root of something that could be negative, but you're going to see in our answer that we we adjust for that. The square root of, of p minus q squared is just p minus q all over two p. And this is way easier to work with. This is just some arithmetic at this point. So let's do uh, the plus case. So one plus P minus Q. So one plus P minus one minus P equals PQ. I plug back in um, one minus P for Q here. So I have one uh, plus a minus one and then P so the, the ones cancel, and then P minus and minus P, get two P, this equals two P over two P. So oops. P over Q is uh, one solution. And then if we do the minus, we get one minus P plus one minus P all over two Q. So this is the minus case, one minus P plus, plus Q. I see one minus P plus one minus P. One minus P is Q, 
This one minus p is q. I have 2q on top over 2q. That's equal to 1. So we have these two uh, solutions. How do we know which one you know, to use where? Um, well, if you look at this solution, p over q, right? This, this whole, what we're solving for is p sub 1, right? So we're solving for a probability. Probability must just be between 0 and 1. That's one of the axioms of probability. If p is greater than q, then this is going to be greater than 1. So this, this will not work. So in that case, we're going to use this solution. So we can say p over q and p over q. Um, and that's why um, when we took the square root, uh, this thing kind of worked. Um, we don't really have to worry about uh, in that case because we're just going to use 1 in, in, in certain parts of the solution. Um, so let's take a second and look at this. This is kind of our result, and we solve this for p sub 1, or the probability of ever hitting step 1. And remember, we have uh, we did this fancy thing where we said probability of hitting k is just p sub 1 to the k. So if we wanted to solve this for k, all we do is raise this to the power of k. right? And 1 to the power of k is still just 1. Okay, so now we have, really simply, the probability of, for any random walk, the probability of hitting a, a certain value k is just p over q to the power of k, when p is less than q, and um, uh, the uh, prop, sorry, the probability of hitting k when p is greater than or equal to q uh, is 1. And I, I was just stuttering because I realized we could make this simpler. p is going to be less than q when p is less than 1 half. And p is going to be greater than or equal to q when it's greater than 1 half, greater than or equal to 1 half. Right. So we can start to develop some intuition around this, right? When p is greater than or equal to 1 half, right? Oops, sorry, you're kind of screwing up here. When p is greater than or equal to 1 half, this is saying that we have 100% probability of hitting any value for k, right? No matter how high k is, and no matter if p is like a little bit over 1 half or exactly 1 half, this thing will drift upwards or just drift around until it hits that value. And it will certainly, at infinite time, hit you know, any value k. Which kind of makes sense, because if you let something run forever and it's drifting upwards, it's going gonna, it's gonna to get pretty high. Um, this value is saying that if p is less than 1 half, right, we can imagine if p is like a lot less than 1 half, we could start off going down and maybe make a little bit of progress back, but eventually we're going to go down a lot and we're just going to be so far out of range that we, we never can hit k. And this is saying that, you can see, the smaller that p gets, p will be small, q will be large, and this value will get smaller. The, the lower probability of going up on any one uh, step is going to decrease your probability of ever hitting k. And also, we have, you know, this power is raised to the k. p divided by q is less than 1 in, in this case. Um, when we raise something less than 1 to the k, it's going to get smaller and smaller as k gets bigger. So, you know, k equals 10 is going to be lower than k equals 100, which makes sense. Like, it's going to be harder to hit it's going to be a lower probability of hitting 100 than it is of hitting 10. So, you know, th th this is kind of intuitive. But what's cool is that this is a very, very, like, open-ended problem. It seems, like, very complicated, but it can be reduced in this really simple way. And with this step of considering one step at a time, you can get just this really, this really neat answer. And we're looking at the probability of hitting a positive K. You can absolutely flip this symmetrically and think about hitting a negative K. I should, I should clarify. Um, this is for uh, a... Square root root zero. Um, you can flip this, it's totally symmetric if you want to think about probability of hitting a, a negative k. So uh, hopefully that helped, and we'll be back soon um, in terms of, we'll be thinking instead of the probability of hitting a certain value, the expected amount of time uh, to hit a certain value. So stay tuned.